Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. Today, I want to talk about vector bundles and the space of sections. So the key point here is that if you use the space of sections of vector bundle, you can have an alternative way of understanding and viewing vector bundles. And this alternative approach also relates the theory of vector bundles to the theory of modules over a ring. Okay, so let's see what our setup is. We'll start with some sort of geometric category, and today we'll just restrict our attention a little bit so that C will either be the category of topological spaces or the category of complex manifolds. X will be our geometric object on which we have some sort of complex vector bundle V. So today we'll just restrict to the complex case uh, to simplify matters. Okay, so we want to relate this to modules over a ring. So what's that ring? So the ring here, R, will be what I denote by C of X. That's going to be the algebra of complex valued functions on X inside my category C. So if you're looking at the category of topological spaces, these are just co continuous complex valued functions on X. If you're looking in the category of complex manifolds, this is just the category, the algebra rather, of holomorphic functions on X. Okay, so we've defined sections of a vector bundle, and what we saw were that these sections were generalizations of the notion of functions. So now what we want to do is we want to look at the totality of the set of these sections. Okay, so that gives us the following definition. The space of global sections of V is just a set of all sections of V. So all S, which are functions X to V, and they have to satisfy the usual condition to be a section, which means that when you project back, you get the identity. And we denote this with this gamma symbol here, gamma for global. So either gamma of V like this, or if you want to emphasize the base space X, we'll write gamma X comma V. Now, what do we know about the set of functions on some space? So the first thing is it's a vector space. So since these sections generalize functions, we can ask if the same is true of this set here. And in fact, that's the case. Okay, so that's the important fact I want to mention here. Gamma V is actually a vector space. A vector space over what? Well, in this case, we're looking at complex vector bundles, so they're vector spaces over C. Okay, so how's that? Well, let's try to work out what is the vector space structure. And the way to do that is to mimic what happens with the vector space of functions on a space. Okay, so suppose you have two global sections, S1, S2, of our vector bundle V, and we want to add them together. Well, how do you add functions together? You add them point-wise. So let's try to do the same thing here. If you want to work out what is S1 plus S2, that has to be a section here. So it has to be a function from X to V. So you input a little X inside big X. And let's try to define it as S1 of X plus S2 of X and see whether that makes sense. What's, what's S1 of X? Okay, So that's going to be some element of the vector bundle. And in fact, it's an element of VX. That's the vector space above x. What about s2 of x? That's also an element of the vector bundle. In fact, it's an element of this vector space vx as well. Since these two are vectors inside the same vector space, you can add them together to give you a new vector inside this vector space. Okay, so in this way, we find that we do get a map which satisfies the condition for being a section in the sense that when you project back to x you get the identity okay so the values that this takes at x are inside the corresponding vector space vx okay and it doesn't matter that this vector space will change as x varies okay that's the difference between vector valued functions and sections of a vector bundle so the other thing that needs to be checked, of course, is that, well, if S1 and S2 were continuous, you have to check that this defines something which is continuous. And if S1 and S2 are holomorphic, then this defines something which is holomorphic. And it's not difficult to do that. Okay, 
Well, what about scalar multiplication? Let's try the same thing and see whether that works. Okay, if you have a section, S1, can you scalar multiply by some complex number alpha? And let's try to use the same formula that, or the same idea that we did before. We mimic the definition for functions. So you look at S1 of x, and that's an element of my vector space Vx. And since you're inside a vector space, which is a complex vector space, you can scale by a complex number alpha to get you some new vector inside here. And it's not, in, not difficult to see that that gives you a well-defined global section alpha S1. OK, so let's have a look at some examples. So in a, the previous video, I introduced some line bundles, holomorphic line bundles, ON, on the complex projective line P1C. And we saw what all the sections of this line bundle were. They correspond to certain polynomials. And which polynomials were they? They were the polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. Now this set of polynomials of degree less than or equal to n is a well-known vector space. It's a well-known subspace of the vector space of polynomials. And it's actually not difficult to see that the, this vector space of polynomials is actually isomorphic to this vector space here. So we saw before a, a set bijection between these two things, but that is more than just a set bijection. It's actually an isomorphism of vector spaces. Now the space of global sections, gamma of V, has a vector space structure, but the interesting fact is there's actually more algebraic structure associated to this uh, space. So what's that? Well, consider the ring of functions on x, complex valued functions on x in our category. So let's pick some f inside there. I claim that actually this set is a module over this ring. Okay, so what does that mean? So let's suppose we have some global section s and some function inside here. I'm going to give you a way of scalar multiplying this section s by this function f to get you something inside here. So how do I define that? So what's f s times x? Well, the key point to remember is that s you should think of it as like a function as well, and you can multiply functions pointwise. So we'll do the same thing here. So this s of x, where does that land? This s of x will be in the vector space of the vector bundle corresponding to x. So this is inside this vector space Vx. And what about f of x? f of x is now just a scalar, so that's inside C. So when you multiply these, you can multiply this. This is just scalar multiplication inside this vector space. So this is inside Vx. So since this is inside Vx, this can potentially describe for you a section of this vector bundle. And the only thing that needs to be checked now is that, well, if f and s were continuous, then so is this product here. And if f and s are holomorphic, then so is this product here. And that's not difficult to show. So in fact, with this scalar multiplication, we see that gamma of v actually becomes now a module, a module over this ring. So it has this extra algebraic structure, which you can use to firstly understand this vector bundle, but it also relates the theory of vector bundles, this very geometric thing, to something very algebraic, which is extremely interesting because it also helps you to give some sort of geometric understanding of some algebra by giving a fairly, in fact, stereotypical example of modules. Okay, so let's have a look at a simple example before we say more about that. So the simplest example of vector bundle, of course, is a trivial vector bundle. So let's suppose V equals the trivial vector bundle X cross C to the R. Let's look at the space of sections, the space firstly. So any section, remember, of a trivial vector bundle is essentially just a function from x to this CR here. Okay, so here you have just a vector valued function, and the vectors lie inside C to the R. So basically, you just have to say what all the coordinates of all these functions are. So it's S1 of x, S2 of x, and so forth up to SR of x. And these functions, S1 to SR, are just your usual scalar valued functions. So in other words, S1 to SR are inside this ring C of x. So to give a section just means to give R elements inside Cx. That's all it is. 
And if you think about it, how do you add and multiply? Of course, if you want to add, remember the definition of addition of sections is just pointwise addition. So here, in this language here, it's just the uh, addition of each of these functions. And the other thing is what happens if you scale and multiply by some uh, function f of x inside cx? You just multiply all the values. So that means that if you want to multiply this by f of x, you just multiply each of these by f of x. So we see at the end of the day, actually, what is this module of sections? The module of all of these? Well, the set of all of these is just R tuples of entries inside here. And so you get the space of global sections gamma v is isomorphic to cx to the r. Firstly, as a vector space, and now we see also as a module over cx. And of course, what is this as a module over cx? It's just a free module. So it's rather interesting in this case that the trivial example that you have here gives you a very, very elementary module, and that's just a free module. And of course, if you think about it, if it has to give you a, a, a module over this, uh, that's a natural choice for what to pick. Okay, so what's really good and makes the relationship between the module theory and the geometry of vector bundles here very close is the following fact that you can actually go back. So in other words, this module actually captures all the information about the vector bundle in many instances. Okay, and those instances are when you have enough functions. Okay, so let's look at the converse viewpoint. Okay, so we're going to start with this uh, module of sections. And we'll do that when we have lots of functions. So one way to guarantee that is when the category is the category of topological spaces. Okay, so remember when you want to look at projective geometry, you have a paucity of functions. So you can't look in that case. Uh, but uh, for some complex manifolds, not the projective ones, but some complex manifolds, you still have enough functions for this argument to work. So suppose you're in this situation. Let's just restrict to the topological spaces now. And the point is that this vector bundle can actually be recovered from this gamma v. And when I say this gamma v, I mean this gamma v as a module over this ring here. OK, so why is it true? Well, for a complete explanation, uh, it's a little bit uh, difficult to um, make rigorous, but I can give you the basic idea. OK, so the main thing to get this v is you want to return from this module of sections to some family of vector spaces. So what is that family of vector spaces? Okay, So let's try to work out what that vector space is above x. And to do that, we have to look at um, function theory. And one of the things that you find is that there's a certain algebraic way that points can manifest themselves. And if you want more information about this, you can have a look at my video on this topic. So just to briefly remind you how that works, we pick some point x inside big X. And what you can do is that with that point, you can consider the following ring homomorphism, which goes from your ring of functions, your algebra of functions, to the complex numbers. And it's quite a simple ring homomorphism. It takes a function, and you just evaluate it at x. So evaluation at x homomorphism. And it's easy to see it's a ring homomorphism, and in fact, an algebra homomorphism. And in fact, also, you can see that it's surjective uh, because we're looking in the category of topological spaces. And so it's easy to generate such a function which maps onto any constant. So since you have this ring homomorphism, then you can apply the first isomorphism theorem to tell you that the image, which is C, is isomorphic to this ring here, Cx, modulo some sort of ideal, which is the kernel of this homomorphism. So Mx is the kernel of phi x. And this kernel of phi x has a very natural interpretation. I mean, if you think about it, what is it? It's all the things that get to the center zero. So they're all the functions here, which take on the value zero at x. Okay. So all the functions which are 0 at x. So now what is this vector bundle v? So we can work out what it is above the point x. How do we do that? Well, we want to use the module gamma of v. And what do we do with it? Okay, so we have some module gamma of v. 
we can multiply this gamma of v by an ideal, and that will give you a submodule of gamma of v. Okay, so mx is an ideal inside here, so multiplying by this gives you some submodule of here. And you can say a little bit more about what is this, uh, sub, this quotient module. So this quotient module is, of course, a module over the Cx. But multiplying by mx annihilates this module. So it's really not just a Cx module, it's a Cx mod mx module. And as a Cx mod mx module, well, what is this quotient? That's naturally isomorphic to the complex numbers. So it's really just a complex vector space. So here we see a complex vector space. And what is that complex vector space? It's your Vx. So if you start it with a vector bundle, V in this category, you can recover the vector bundle from this module of sections. And because of that, that means there's a very close relationship between modules theory and vector bundles. Okay, so let's have a little look at an example of this and see how that works. Uh, let's look at this previous example, the trivial vector bundle, where you have gamma V equals just this free module here. And what you can do is you can multiply this by mx. Okay, you can multiply this by mx. So if you multiply this by mx, of course you get r copies of mx sitting inside here. So then in that example, you get this submodule inside here. Okay, so now what do you want to do? So now you just take the quotient. And what happens when you take the quotient? Of course, when you take the quotient of this inside here, you get Cx mod mx r times. And what was Cx mod mx? Cx mod mx is just C. So you just get C r times. And that's precisely the fiber of this vector bundle upon, above any point. Okay, so that nicely recovers what you have here. So to sum up in this video, we've seen that vector bundles give you modules as well, modules over the algebra of functions. And that means that the theory of vector bundles is strongly related to module theory. And a natural question that you can ask is, well, well what types of modules can you get? Is, are they just very special? Or are they fairly typical? And the answer is that they actually correspond to projective modules. And this is something that I'll show you in another video in this playlist. So that means that this gives you an alternative way of uh, looking at projective modules, uh, you can actually view them geometrically. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.